Welcome back to Let's Play Control, Burning Dog fans. Last time, we confronted the former, a piece of the board that is no longer with them. We also failed to save Phil Filson from, uh, some manner of untimely death. Let's go inform his boss. Uh, wrong side. You guys didn't bring, like, checkers or anything, did you? Any active duty security personnel found engaging in non-sanctioned leisure activities will be relieved of duty pending review, sir. Could have just said no. Yeah, that was a bit passive-aggressive. How'd it go? Where's Philip? Philip's gone. Something happened before I could get him out. <sighs> Poor Philip. He never did like fridge duty. But if you're here, then who's watching the fridge? The fridge is fine now. I took care of it. You don't just take care of altered items. What did you do? I touched it. I'm wound up in the astral plane. This thing was in there. It was huge, had one big eye. Wasn't friendly. We've been getting reports from the astronauts lately about something fitting that description. The astral plane is usually connected to our world through objects of power, not altered items. If this thing is linking itself to altered items, then it's clearly powerful. This may happen again. Do you think that thing is what got Philip? Must have been. The Panopticon is a dangerous place. The agents all know the risks. But, since you're some sort of altered item whisperer, I've got a list of others for you. Ooh! Well. The hiss are causing containment breaches left, right, and center. Here, start with these. I'll see if there are any others missing while you're gone. My life just got a whole lot easier. You know, he talks about how we all know the the, uh, the dangers, and he does have a big old scar on his face, so uh, I don't think he's uh, immune to that. Achieve and unlock the importance of synergy. Complete five side missions. I also missed one just earlier. Uh, astral phenomena. Defeat former. Is there another one in there? Oh yeah, my brother's keeper. Complete mission six. Sure, 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 sure. And rising thought. Obtain the levitate ability. Good. All is well. Do you like working at the FBC? Sure. I mean, yeah, the drama's a bit much, but I get better benefits here than I would over at the Postal Service. I checked. Better health care. That's not to say I don't like my job, ma'am. Been here over 15 years. No one knows the Panopticon collection better than me. I'm, uh, close to them. I can't tell if that's creepy or normal here. How did you get this job? Started as a junior agent because my uncle knew a guy. From there I got put on a desk until an accident left the containment sector severely understaffed. At which point I got bumped up to management. Put in a steady eight hours a day for another ten years and voila! Supervisor. I just picked up a gun. Or a gun picked me. <laughs> Did you work closely with Trench? Oh, he spent most of his time with Darling and all them. The inner circle. Not that I care. Trench certainly had his favorites. He did stop in occasionally to scowl and smoke. Sounds about right. you know the Bureau has a no-smoking policy? It does. Just not for Trench. Still, he is the one who put aside funding for the Panopticon. The man did have vision. How do you keep the altered items under control? It depends on the item. Each one has different needs. Ritualistic touches go a long way. Singing to them. Did he say singing? Flipping the lights three times, that sort of thing. It's not superstition if it works. And he's not wrong. What's the difference between objects of power and altered items? Think of them like storms. 
Okay. Objects of power are like tropical cyclones or hurricanes for the uneducated. They're big, rare, and scary. Of course, directors can just bind the OOP and become the eye of the storm. Altered items are more like weird thunderstorms. Some may rain frogs, some may rain corn, but they all rain something. And how does the hiss factor into all that? It's changing them, making them aggressive. Now they're all raining, I don't know, knives, knife rain. Nice metaphor. For just a heartbeat there, I thought he was going to make a reference to Time Knife from Quantum Break. I'll see you later, Langston. I'll be here. Oh, the sudden stop hits theaters tonight. I can't believe I'm missing an Alex Casey movie for this. Nice! Uh, okay. Uh, that needs some explanation. Alex Casey is a character, a fictional fictional character, invented by Alan Wake, the writer, who is a very thinly uh, disguised version of Max Payne, the uh, character created by Remedy, but uh, ultimately sold to Rockstar. And, uh... Let me just take a look at that mission he gave me. Japanese paper lantern, traffic light hand chair, and moving letters. Okay. But we, we do really have to do the other thing first, because, you know... Uh, The Sudden Stop was the last Alex Casey novel, where he dies at the end, hence the, se the secret twist in the title. And, uh... Wait. I thought... All right, more context. They created a duplicate of Alan, an evil twin named Mr. Scratch. And when Alan was sealed in the dark place, Mr. Scratch ran around murdering people for fun and got the whole world to think that Alan Wake was a serial killer. So if they think Alan Wake's a serial killer, who the fuck is getting the, uh, the residuals and why would they make a movie out of the book? We're just gonna walk in, and they're all having a sing-along, and Dylan's the the life of the party. Uh, no, everyone's gonna be inside out or something, right? That's what it's gonna be. He's murdered everybody. I don't want him to be the bad guy. Is he just the Hiss version of me? Is that where this is going? Has the Hiss been in his head for 17 years? Oh my god, did she have to write everything in her made-up gibberish code? Fucking Marshall, their CIA spy shit, god. Put a record on. Jukebox token! Well, the ha I don't know, not the house, I guess. Uh, Polaris really wanted me to have that. Hey, Irish. Shout out to Rachel Starwin, who, uh... If they're in there, we go around that way. Really hopes that, uh, he makes it to the credits. Oh, you're right here. No, you're not. This is the same hairstyle. You're trying to suck up to the boss. <laughs> I like that. Oh, that means when I go back to containment, it will be full of dangerous enemies. The resonance emitted from the HRAs is purely antithetical to every variant of the Hiss signal I can arrange. But how did Darling create it? No, it's happening. After all these years, Dylan is here. I don't am see I him. Too late? How is he? I need to know. He's clearly been affected by the hiss, but it's different than any other manifestation we've recorded. Maybe what makes you so special is genetic. He was a prime candidate. Or maybe it's Polaris protecting him, something else affecting the situation. I need to run tests. Hmm. He seems more in control, more present. Then? I want to see him. My brother. Or is he? 
Of course. Now, Marshall set up an HRA warded cage to contain him. It's on the upper floor, up the stairs. Okay, I need to go. Jesse, be careful. No, fuck the lore. We're just gonna go meet Dylan. It's been 17 goddamn years, and I've already been putting it off for that silly side quest. If it hadn't been about saving a life, I wouldn't have gone for it. That was, uh... Even for the Bureau, that seemed paranoid. Uh, Zachariah Trench is a member of the secret organization that has been responsible for every disaster the world's seen in the last 20 years. If you didn't hear her say the first part. Uh... Oh. Information's always been on a need-to-know basis. Well, I need to fucking know. Damn it. Am I missing something? No, it's here. It's here. Oh, well, god damn it! Now it just looks silly. Because you can't fly, of course. You can't do anything fun here. This is a no fun zone. It would be really funny to me if one of these rooms is like standing room only with uh Great. Maybe I can get back to my office with the floating agents. I miss having a door to close on people. I think you're gonna have to endure the inconvenience a little longer. Yeah, I was saying they should have it would be funny if they just like, corralled them all into one office. So that they could have the most space to work with. So that we wouldn't have to listen to the chanting. Hello. She did say on the upper level. You're going to need to be more specific. Fine, I'll read the lore. Timeline of events. Emily Pope, research specialist by order of me. Analysis of his threat part four to examine the hit invasions timeline of events for possible patterns in his behavior. Establishing a timeline is difficult at present because of lack of reliable communications between bureau sectors and staff. Preliminary models indicate ground zero of the invasion is located within the executive sector. Once it becomes possible to interview surviving personnel, pinpointing the exact location should be feasible. Other outstanding questions that a timeline may help answer. How did the Hiss get past the internal lockdown? How does the Hiss resonance advance through space, deliberately or uniformly? What is their ultimate goal? The outside world? A cross-dimensional destination? Refer to Redacted for full report. Transit Corridor North? No. Conceptual material. Untapped potential. Untapped potential, Category 3-59288 Anomaly. It's not very professional at all. Speech analysis, part three. If we understand the hiss to be a force based on vibration and resonance, and perhaps their incantation, which is now the agreed upon term for their vocalization, it's an eff effort to express that resonance using human vocal cords and speech. Would there be differences if the incantation were recited in a different language? The most common word used is want. Interestingly, every usage of the word is attributed to a you. You want to listen. You want this to be true. You must want these waves to drag you away. Are we the you the Hiss are referring to? Does the Hiss believe humanity, possibly all non-Hiss life, wants to join it, to be consumed by it? Is that its goal? The second most used words are through and time. Is this possibly the Hiss stating how they arrived here, or an indication of its age? There is a clear intention in the words. Dismissing the incantation of nonsense, as some of my colleagues recommend, is beyond idiotic. Refer to redacted for full report. Hey, maybe we should leave out the personal judgments next time? I mean, I can do that, but nobody can hear me. Linguistic ability, part two. 
Researchers were sent to transcribe the recursive chant repeated by the hiss entities. In the interests of safety, this was done with the non-aggressive floating hiss entities. This is probably because the other ones don't uh, repeat the chant. Jeez, what a silly thing to say. Like specifying that you needed butterfly wings, and in the interest of efficiency, this was done with only butterflies. Uh, let's see. However, no distinction between the repeating phrase and the one repeated. There isn't one repeated by the more violent hiss entities. They just scream or shout. Has been observed. What is the purpose of this repeating string of words? Is this how the hiss corrupts individuals? Does the chant produce a physical effect? Is it a message, an incantation? We were able to record a first-hand reciting of the chanting. See the corresponding audio record. No thank you. Refer to file redacted for full report. Hi, Jesse. Sup. Nope, that's not it. How is HRA production coming along? <laughs> Better than expected. We've already made enough to get people out of a couple safe rooms. And they're here, alive, thanks to you. We never would have lasted this long if you hadn't walked in those doors. You deserve thanks, too, of course. We got this place up and running together, Emily. I should be going. Enjoy your data. Oh, I will. Speak with Dylan on the upper level. I would feel like a cell. Oh, it's probably behind the guards. Yes. Yes. Good. Oh. Why was his hand starting to disappear in that cutscene? I mean, it is technically different from the others, but not that different. Shit. That's Dylan. Can you hear me? Oh, come on, Dylan. I'm here. I found you. Try your name. Do you know who I am? Oh, you know me. Say it. You are Dylan Faden's sister. He's talking in the third person. No, he isn't. Always a good sign. Do you know who you are? Not Dylan. Trench and Darling made sure of that. I'm P6. Oh, no. P6. But... I'm better now. The hiss made me better. Push the fingers through the surface into the wet. You've always been the new you. You want this Please stop that. Please. <sighs> Not exactly the reunion I'd hoped for. It feels good to say those words. I want to say them. They sound good. They make me feel good. Don't you want to say them, too? No. Fuck off, no. You need to help me get this thing out of his head. If he is still in there, if there is anything left, you have to you. help me. You! You came in through the hole in you! We let you in, you've always been here! The only child! A copy of a copy of a copy of a copy! Stop it! Orange field! Shit! Shit! He can see you. This is not the hell? We found Polaris together with my sister when we were very small. In ordinary. In the desert, through the door opened up by the slide projector. But she didn't help when Trench took me away. She didn't give me any powers. All the powers are my own powers. And <laughs> she didn't help when they locked me up for years. After the song time for a pause, we build you till nothing remains. The air cracks and the truth will march out of you. You are home. 
The Bureau brought the slide projector back here with me. And the Bureau did what the Bureau does. They used it. And they found... They opened the door up to the hiss. That's the only thing I can thank them for. There. There it is. We stopped the Altered World event in Ordinary when we shut down the slide projector. And now the projector's here. Pioneer Worm is a tune you can't stop humming in a dream. Baby, baby, baby. Yeah. Um. Just plastic. So safe. Nothing to worry about. <laughs> Funny. I welcomed the hiss. I let it in. To get rid of her. The hiss set me free. Polaris is using you. The Bureau is using you. You are a puppet. You can almost hear our words, but you forget. If we shut off the slide projector, maybe, maybe that will stop the hiss. Didn't stop Polaris. Maybe it's not too late for my brother. You must see the truth for yourself, Jesse. Sister. The horrible truth about the Bureau. The hiss is the better option. Go to the prime candidate program in the containment sector. I have the key card to get you there. Salvador wanted me to have it. Wanted? Bullshit. I saw what the hiss did to Salvador. What it turned him into. Okay, Dylan. I'll go. I want to see the truth for myself. I'll go. But only to look for this light projector. You can help me. We can end this. You are a warm through time. Someone left a comment that was a reply to someone else saying that you are the only child and you've always been here. I didn't realize that was taken from the, uh, the chant because I have been consciously trying not to listen to the words. Don't mind me. Just ruining your thinking time. What do you know about this Arish guy? I heard some rangers saying he saved them in maintenance. They were attacked by a new kind of hiss, and Arish got them out. All right, but still, a security guard leading rangers? I don't know if I like taking orders from a mall cop. Well, I don't know that he'd like giving orders to a World War II paratrooper, but there you are. Yeah, I should have seen that one coming. You know, somehow the most disturbing part is that none of them are labeled. Sticky note complaint. To whom it may concern, in case you are not aware, something caused a sticky note in my office to duplicate. My office is unusable now. I will be working home until this is resolved. You can reach me on my cell or a home phone. Sincerely, Jay Bozer, Vice Chief of Staff. So it's just a gag, essentially. That's a new one. Why is it yellow, though? Jukebox token. Excess's expeditions when inserted into the jukebox. No smoking policy, huh? There are literally ashtrays everywhere.
Marshal orders us to just sit on our asses and then leaves? What's the deal? She must have her reasons. She's probably out doing some recon. Then she should have taken us with her. I need some action, goddammit! Jesus. Calm yourself. Where's the executive bathroom having shifted away? <laughs> I'd kill for a shower. Why don't the non-combatants just leave the building? I don't remember if they've ex explained that. Hey, it's you. I don't think that was there last time. Oh. All right, we'll finish the episode on this. Television proposal. Television show proposal based on the success of America Overnight. We would like to propose the creation of a television series that presents superstition and skeptical thought as entertainment in order to popularize these comments as concepts among the civilian, popul civilian population and create less resistance to redirecting information regarding public paranatural events. Hmm. We can also use a solid media outlet to test paranatural concepts on civilian audiences, seeing how they react to certain facts presented as fiction. In the event that the Bureau ever decides to make certain realities public knowledge. There are various show licenses that we could purchase and reboot rather than starting from scratch. One particular property seems promising, especially considering its content and tone are precisely what we're looking for. It's called Night Springs and has been off the air for a few years now. Oh yeah! Maybe we could get Alan back to write some more episodes. Hey there, Faith. What's up? We're going to talk to him and find out it's what the other things time. that uh, Emily had to say in the next episode of Let's Play Control. I'm Burning Dogface, and I will see you then. Later.